even on Chav Ches Nisner, Vas Kenich Nach Tanin Nemvelech, Whatever I could still do, I will do. It wasn't just, I'm going to give you a shlich mitzvah with stuck. All the stiches that come after are an extension of that line. Whatever I can do to help you do your job and bring Moshiach, I will do. So this is like the most potent uh, medicine. And you, in, when you're fighting a disease or a war, you always need the most up-to-date weaponry, ammunition. You're not going to win a war with, uh, you know, yesteryear's guns and techniques. Welcome, everybody. I'm very excited today. We have a very special guest, Rabbi Gershon Aftzin, who's a Rosh Yeshiva in Cincinnati. He has a beautiful yeshiva. And um, let's jump right in. Rabbi Aftzin, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey? Depends which part of my journey you would like to know. I'm still on a journey. Life is always a journey. But if you're talking more about the getting involved in learning about Mashiach and teaching about Mashiach. So let me share with you a, you know, my journey, so to speak, you asked in those terms. I was born and raised in Crown Heights. So living with Mashiach wasn't from any specific safer. You just saw the Rebbe every single day in the Chassidim, you know, spending two years in the Gimel and Dalit, every Mincha Mairev, the beeper is Mashiach now, and the Rebbe is coming out now, and Mincha now. You know, you didn't have to open up a Sefer or even hear Chazora from a Fabrengen. Just being by the Fabrengens and just hearing Void Voiker and everything Mashiach now, and everyone screaming Amen. You didn't have to learn about Mashiach to live with Mashiach. Not exactly we knew what Mashiach was as little children. I was born in Tavshim and Malif. So that means in Tavshin Nun Aleph, I was 10 years old. But nevertheless, the entire atmosphere, Crown Heights, was Mashiach. That was it. You didn't have to learn it. You lived it on a very, very real level. Not real in understanding, but real in just, that was it. That's the only thing we heard, we knew, and what we lived for. Um, my two, there, I would say there are two very interesting things that happened to me. Again, I turned 13 in Tavshinun Dalit, which means I entered Masifta, which that's when your brain starts opening, developing, start thinking of your own a little bit. In Tavshin Nun Hey, Elul Nun Dalit was my first entering into Masifta. And at that point, obviously, they started becoming more, you know, Mashiach lost, I shouldn't use the word lost, but became a little bit more political. People were trying to understand how do we adjust to it now? Do we adjust? Is there a change of message? Is there, you know, people started sharing opinions and very, very strongly, very passionately. It was very, very, very real and deep. And, you know, I was 14, 15, again, a Crown Heights boy. And I'll never forget the summer of Tovshin Nun Vav. I learned in Tannersville, New York, Rabbi Akiva Wagner of Shalom, who later became but that was my first introduction to him. So we learned, we had, a, we had, he had a summer program in upstate New York, Tannersville for Masifta Bachran. This was before he actually opened the yeshiva in Toronto. It was the summer before the yeshiva opened. The yeshiva opened Elul Tov Shinun Vav. So um, I was there and part of the curriculum was the learning of Beis Rabbeinu Shebe Now it's hard for people to understand that because today we learn Kundas Beis Rabbeinu Shebe since you're like four months, you know, it's like uh, every kid knows it and you know, it's like, oh, Kundas Beis I want to tell you the truth, I was 15 years old and that was the first time we opened it. Be you have to understand, I remember my uncle, I have an uncle, Sholem Ber Aftzin, he's very idealistic, he was Lamed in seventh grade for many years, Ocean Parkway. He had a campaign, I remember then, that the contrasin that the Rebbe would give out, he would make the kids bring to school the next day, that at least they should learn it once inside. He said, the Rebbe didn't put, give you a contras to put on your shelf. Yeah, well, contrasin came out, sichis came out, but that doesn't mean kids, then we learned it. I remember we had a shear on it, if I'm not mistaken, Rebbe Ben Sien Pape, now a shliach in Arkansas, I think he was my magad shear then for the Yeshiva Skyets, for the sichis, if I'm not mistaken. 
there were two sikhs that we learned that summer. The first time I was opened, we learned the sikh of Beisham and Beisil, Koyach and Poyal, which was like mind blowing for, you know, just seeing the Rebbe's vision and the Rebbe's, you know, look on the whole shas, like in one sikh, like was just amazing. And then we learned Beis Rabbeinu Sheva and I couldn't believe the Oisius that I was reading because I had been hearing for the last year and a half, you know, this, did the Rebbe say this? Did the Rebbe say that? What does the Rebbe really want? You know, that was the talk in Crown Heights and everywhere. And all of a sudden, like, jumped out at me from the page, these Oisius that I never even imagined anyone saying, based on Mikdash coming from Shemayin to 770, based Moshiach. Like, well, I couldn't believe it that this was actually... Like written and Muga by the Rebbe was like, that was the first time when I realized that if I really want to know what the Rebbe wants, I really have to see it in the source. That was like my first like introduction to that, um, you know, that type of learning. But it stayed with that until really, and it's probably a little embarrassing, when I was like, Shirbez Zal, Shirbez Zal, the Yeshivas Kayets. That year from Toronto was in a small village outside of Toronto called Hamilton, Ontario. And I was a madrich and I taught a little bit for the Masif de Bachram and I had time on my hands. And that's when I started learning consistently the Sikhis of the summer of Tavshin and Aleph, going through it, the whole Sikha. And again, it was like unbelievable. I couldn't believe, not just what the Rebbe is saying about the Nasi Moshiach, because that's more than Bays. As much as Goyla, Geula, the whole, and the importance of learning Balak, learning about Moshiach, like all those things which today have become, everyone has booklets and you can just file and everyone knows all the quotes. Then it was much less uh, defined and much less, uh, you know, Masudar. But learning those Sikhs, spending the whole summer learning the Sikhs of the summer through Shaiftim, of course, it was just a very, very, and again, then I was older, I was right now 18. So when you're 18, you can understand a little bit more, spent a lot more time working on it, learning it. That really, really cemented that this is who I am, this is where I want to go with it. Like that summer and learning the, the Sikhs, really, really like, okay. Yeah, the Basura Sagulo you have today, you have, so to speak, the, the, the exciting parts, the Basuras. And you go through, you know, there's a share in 770 every morning. They finish it every two weeks. It's like you get it knocked into your head. Obviously, you got to, you have to learn the whole sikha. But uh, I've always found the context of the full sikha, you know, always, uh, everyone says, look at the context. It makes it so much more stark and you get the... There's no it, question because so when you learn the Surah Sagula, which is amazing, and I carry it with me in my talis bag wherever I go, I say, Adarech, that the Barditchiver said about the Tanya, that they after ever took an entire big apister and put it into such a small safer, that we took the whole Moshiach and really put it into a <laughs> small little safer, the Basura Sagula. And what's important, A, is for me, also, you meet a lot of people if I'm traveling on the plane, and they start bringing questions, Moshiach, Rebbe, I say, listen, I'm a Lubavitcher Chosin, I will, I will let you see what the Lubavitcher Rebbe said. You may not agree, but you have to understand that as a Chosin, this is what I have to believe. In other words, Put it all on the Rebbe, and that really is amazing because there's this misconception that the Hasidim made it all up, you know, the, the, all these things, and when they see it on the Rebbe Sichas. But yes, when you learn the Basura Sagula, you somehow could get mistaken that it's just about some war in Iraq. Like, it just, you know, you, you get lost in the, the Reichkeit sometimes, and especially when it's just, okay, I saw the place, Bezos, Gimel, you know, just doing the mantra, but. Uh, when you learn the entire sikha, you really get the full perspective. It's a full binion. It's a whole... Yeah. And you see how the Rebbe is building week after week. It's not stam, you know. It's literally the Rebbe is building and you see the Rebbe's tone. Like, in the you see how it's really the Fabrengans, they start, you know, earlier about, if you look in the earlier years especially, the Rebbe speaks in Yonim or Rashi or Rambam or Le- Yitzchak. There's also in Yonim of Moshiach. But then, like, you start learning these Fabrengans. Start, okay, we're talking about Moshiach. Now, that's, how does that fit with the parsha? How does that fit with everything else? But, like, the we're starting, the topic of this Fabrengan is Moshiach. Now we'll get to everything You, you else. could almost say the whole Malchum the base is one big Hemshech. The Dibra Maschel is about the parsha. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Moshiach yeah. Hemshech. 
There's no question, no question. And I see it clear and, you know, I keep, try to keep on learning it over and over because we know the, the Rebbe wrote to someone and it's printed in Igris Kodesh, Chelek Dalet, on Mubchav Dalet, I think, where the person after Yud Shvat felt uh, lonely, you know, uh, you know, depressed, abandoned a little bit. And the Rebbe said that the Friedrich Rebbe is a real Roy Yisrael, he's a real shepherd, he's a real Nasi. He would never leave us forsaken. And that's why, if you look in the Sichis, the Rebbe says of the last two years, you'll see how the Friedrich Rebbe was preparing his Hasidim for the, what's coming next. The Rebbe uses an expression, If only the Anash and the Tmimim would get involved in these Sichis, they would be able to draw energy and life for whatever they're going through. And there's no question that from after Chof Ches Nissen, there was a dramatic, dramatic switch in the, not only the tone of the Sichis, but I like to say, and people don't always agree with this uh, perspective, but I believe it very strongly. If you believe that on Chof Ches Nissen, something dramatically switched in whose job it is to bring Moshiach, that as to before, it was, so to speak, the Rebbe took the job, and in Chav Ches Nisan, the Rebbe gave us the job to bring Moshiach. If we take that seriously and literally, so then you also have to understand that the Sichas after Chav Ches Nisan, the Rebbe knows that it's our job, and now he's teaching us for the first time, empowering us, I'm teaching you how to do your job. Instead of you listening how I'm doing my job, which you did for the last 40 years, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a glimpse into my world. What a... Well, how I'm bringing Mashiach. Now I'm giving you what you need to do to do your job. There was never a time in history that a Nasi told the Yidin that it's their job. So these Sichas are very, very important because these are the Sichas which were said after we were given the job to bring Mashiach. So obviously these Sichas are tailored to that goal and that mission and that purpose. Yeah, you hear the refrain sometimes like, you know, why, why are you cocking in, in the announcement base? There, there's so many sikhs of the Rebbe. There's, there's the whole of the sikhs for us, Mr. Fakok, Dafka, and the sikha, which obviously is a silly time. That if, you know, unless you've op opened it up, you'll see that it's, uh, you'll see why. But this is really the point I think you're saying because this is, this is the guidebook. This is the instructions. This is, uh, this is how we know what to do, how to make it happen. That's why these are so relevant. Right. Especially you hear, now. Even on Chavches Nisnev, was can ich noch tonen dem Whatever I could still do, I will do. It wasn't just, I'm going to give you a shlich mitzvah with stuck. Right. All the stiches that come after are an extension of that line. Whatever I can do to help you do your job and bring Moshiach, I will do. So this is like the most potent, the most potent uh, medicine. And you, it, when you're fighting a disease or a war, you always need the most up-to-date weaponry, ammunition, you're not going to win a war with, uh, you know, yesteryear's guns and techniques. And, of course, every one of the sikhs of the Rebbe are emes and chayim v'kayom and la'ad, not chas v'shalom to minimize anything of the Rebbe. But there is no question, the Rebbe told us about the Friedrich Rebbe, where if we want to get the energy that's needed for the avoid of now, we are to look. And the same is true here. If you want to know how to do our job, that was only spoken after Chav Chesnis. It's very interesting because we, we I think in last ep last week, we were speaking about the, we, we were finishing Chai Sara and how the Rebbe basically shifts the whole, the whole thing into now the Iker, now that we have to focus on Melech HaMashiach, that Kabbalah's Pene Mashiach did Kainu. And uh, it was brought up um, by some, by someone in, that, that listens that, yeah, a good question. Like for for many many years, everybody thought that as soon right one more mitzvah and like all of a sudden everything happens at the same time, right? Mashiach comes and Geula comes and it all it all happens in like one split of a second and it's amazing, right? Pashat uh, the the the, the Malcham Mashiach comes with a big shafer on a cloud and uh, lifts all of us up and takes us to to Eretz Yisrael and it's all beautiful and for for. I remember my education, and I know a lot of people that have that, that have similar thoughts that that how it, that's how it has to be. And all of a sudden, Dreb is shifting it and saying that 
now in in Parshas Noach, how it's not about um and I I saw a very gishmak avart that now we have to shift from Geula from everything else, and now we have to focus on Malcha Mashiach. And what's that? What's that we have to focus on? The Rebbe said. Now he now now that it started, he has to. We have to do our shlichas to get him to help him do his shlichas, which is shlach. Uh, you, you, men, you mentioned Chayes Sora. I would like to share something that I feel it's always important when people approach the sikh of Chayes Sora. There's a perspective that has to be really, really um, thought about, and why 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 it's such an important sikha. and that is. We, you know, we forget that the Rebbe runs the world in a very, very interesting way. There's no army where the general of the army speaks on a day that his soldiers can't hear him. In other words, how does it usually work? You energize your soldiers, they go out and they do the mission, right? You hear even the even the Titus says that the Kayin HaMashiach Muhammad brings with them and then, you know, don't give up and there's a whole lot, ta -da -da -da, and then they go out to war. The Rebbe Shluchim are outside in the Sada and the Rebbe Fabrings on Shabbos. You know, all the bombs, all the messages are being sent on Shabbos and the Shluchim are hearing it secondhand. So even if they heard Chazara and even if they read all the... Mamish, mamish, the taking cuts there, and the kid, and every other type of. The Rebbe said, but Dafra is calling with the with the. Yeah, it's all the shluchim. What I'm saying is that we'll get to that line in a second. <laughs> that the the whole time when the Rebbe is building the whole Moshiach, this Nunalev Nun Beis, think about yourself as a shliach in a place. There's no question. And you know this clearly. You can look at a younger man, a shliach, and you can know what years that shliach was in 770. You meet my Feller, he's almost 90 years old, screaming about Mifzat Filin. You know you know that he was in the Chavzai and he was in the trenches. A shliach that lived his years in 770, those are the years which are in Zain Bainer. It's in his bones. He's living with those sikhs that he stood in front of the Rebbe. And how the shluchim, how are they supposed to get? The, they're hearing the, what the Rebbe her said, and this guy's interpretation, what the Rebbe said, and there's controversy. Chayesara is the one time where the Rebbe is speaking directly to his army. In other words, it's the one opportunity since Chavches Nissen, where the Rebbe actually speaks directly to the shluchim. They've been hearing for months what might be the message and what the Rebbe wants and the Bacham are saying what the Rebbe really wants and there's a lot going on. And here, that's why Chayesar is so important because it's directly, it's the first and only time that the army is standing in front of the general and the Rebbe is making very clear. And Bacham asked me about the line you mentioned. What's the Rebbe saying? We have to give an announcement to all the Shluchim. Isn't the Rebbe speaking to the Shluchim? So some people think that it means that, oh, the shluchim that didn't make it to the kinos that year. So the Rebbe is saying, don't forget to tell them. To me, it's very posh that they were speaking to the shluchim that for years, this is going to be the marching orders until Moshiach. And any chassid was really a shliach. You know, the Rebbe is saying that this sicha is for all the shluchim, the chola I mean, not doiris, but like for all the years until Moshiach, that yeah. this is your message. So it's almost clear in the sicha that it's not just for those in the room. Yeah, from this side of the fence in Tavshin Pedal, it seems very clear what it means. Yeah, yeah, that there are so many people who unfortunately didn't yet get the uh, didn't get get the memo, and the Rebbe is saying we've got to get the memo out to everyone to all the shluchim that this is uh, this is the yeah. job of our times. Yeah, so I wanna I wanna go back. You're you're in the middle of of your 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 journey. Um, I think you said you said uh, you were, you started I guess when you were eighteen when you were in Shir Bezal finishing Shir Bezal finishing in the summer you started getting into the Sichas so I let uh, if you can continue your your journey I'd like to yeah so then I came to but I wasn't really teaching you no know, Gula Moshiach was I was just starting to 
to learn. And then I came to Alotero, Alotero Shirgim, I was there for two years, Shirgim on Shirdalid. And by then it was already, uh, we were on Troy Avenue. When I was in Shirdalid, I think in other time, we moved to Eastern Parkway that year. But, you know, they always had Bachrim getting together, learning Gula Moshiach. By then I already had understood the importance of learning Basara and learning it well. And so I started participating in the Shir which was mainly, again, at that point, it wasn't such an in-depth shear, you know, was whether Migoyla the Geula or the Swarm of Heichel Menachem of uh, Moshiach, you know, going through it. I participated, and I'm not sure at what point, but I think it's possibly, it's possible when Shirdalid, when, or middle of Shirgim, I don't remember, when instead of just going around the table, so somehow I got designated with giving the shear. And uh, I started giving the share. It wasn't a big crowd. And also I started giving a share in the Masifta upstairs. I started giving a share in the Hatkufa Bagula of uh, Rabbi Meislish from the Shlich of Mexico came out, which I thought was a very good and very thorough safer. I gave a share in the Masifta upstairs. That started the giving the Shiurim. And then in Shirdalit, I became, they landed on me the, to be in charge of getting the, the weekly speaker. I, I hope it's, I don't know if it still goes on in Shirdalit. They bring a guest. So Last time I recall, it still goes uh, a few years okay. back. It's still okay. going on. So that was what landed on me. It was like a, a whole week's worry was like getting a speaker for the Shir. Um, but it really, what really took it to the next level was when I went to Shlichas, I was two years in Toronto. That's when I decided that something dramatically has to change. And I, what, what do I mean? That until then, it was a, like a rambling, bambling sheer, and you convince people to come with some cookies and uh, orange juice and whatever. And I decided I was going to change, and it was a big fight because people said, you're never going to be successful. And I said that we're going to take out all the Farbaisen, but we're going to invest in the shear. The shear is going to be with Mekoyres. The shear is going to be done really, really well. That 15-minute shear, the Bochum are going to feel they walked away with something, like for real. They're going to walk away with something. And when we abolished the Farbaisen, there was an uproar. And I said, okay, we'll see. Yeah, so the first few days, it was very small. I would say by the time we finished, we were like 40 bachim a night coming to learn Gul Mashiach because they knew that it was going to be a shear that was prepared, a shear that had mekoides, a shear I put a lot, a lot of time and effort in those shiurim. And that's when I realized what I believe strongly is that people want to know and people want quality and people are much deeper and much higher quality people than just cookie eating and orange juice drinking people. If you share with them something with a depth, a prepared way, people will listen and people want to know. So what would you say is uh, for, you know, people listening or Bracham listening, trying to understand what really shifted in the, in the Aveda the regular shlukas going on before, and then comes this now from the bays, comes Chayasara, comes all this stuff. And like you said, people at the time didn't really know how to absorb it. It was all coming too fast. If you were there in Kran Heights, you got the Adrum, but if you didn't, you kind of missed it, or, or, you know, you didn't necessarily get the full brunt, and then it was all over too quickly. So how do you how do you explain it? What is, a, what is our Avaidah now? What really changed? What is that supposed to look like? So there, it's a lot to co- go through in uh, in three, four minutes, but let me just share with you a few points. And that is, we also, we have to define the difference between Mifza Moshiach and any other Mifza. All the other Mifzoyim of the Rebbe are very action-based. What's Mifza Tfilin? Put on so somebody. The person knows what he's doing. He's doing it for your birthday. He's doing it somehow every Friday is your birthday. <laughs> It doesn't matter, you know, that's uh, whatever it takes. A mezuzah on the door is a mezuzah on the door. Whether the person believes it's a shmita or he thinks it's some 
spiritual thing. It doesn't matter. You know, it's all about the Maisa. What's the Maisa of Mifza Moshiach? What do you want him to do? Like, it's not a... Mifza Moshiach is something that's supposed to change your entire attitude, your entire vision, your entire machshava dibura maisa. For example, when it's Shabbos coming, your clothes change, your whole attitude changes, you get into a mode of Shabbos. When a very, very chashva person is coming, clean up, you're living on a higher standard. You're living on a standard which, what until now was considered permissible and okay, in this current place that you're heading to, that you're about to enter, you have to adjust and uplift. That only comes from a realization. That all starts in the head. And that's why the real Kabbalah from the Mashiach, the says, is expressed. Not only, obviously, there's the idea of signatures and people saying, and all these wonderful things, and Yechi, but the real Chinuch is the person that's learning about Mashiach because you have to get that person to be ready to change their lifestyle. I always tell my Talmidim, you know, I can get hundreds of people to, for a promotional video to put up signs that they love the yeshiva in Cincinnati. You know, they'll wear a hat that says they love Cincinnati. They'll put on their cars if I pay them. You know, they could put up banners. You could put up all over New York, we love Cincinnati. But so you'll tell all those people, are you ready to move to Cincinnati? Oh, no, no, no. What's in it for me? Oh, like, tell me more about it. You know, they can scream it. They can dance it. They can proclaim it. But they're not ready to move there unless they're convinced that there's something worth giving up what they have, the lifestyle that they have, in order to get to the dream that you're promising them. They have to really, really believe. If they don't know what it is, they're not... All the screaming and all the banners is not getting them there. The Rebbe doesn't just want us to scream with Shia. The Rebbe wants us to live, travel. We have to get on the journey to actually change our machshava dibra mindset and get into that Shabbos the mindset and, and acting in a Moshiach the way. And that's an all-encompassing avoid. That, and that starts from the cup, from our head. The more we learn about Moshiach, the more we start seeing Moshiach in everything, the more our life becomes a Moshiach, the life, our machshava, our dibur, our maise, we think, speak, and act differently because we understand that we are in standing on the threshold of the gula, and therefore, semansich is demanding from us a higher standard of oida. That's why, and that's really the, you know, the difference before Chayesara and after Chayesara you know, for the Rebbe says, for example, what's the difference between the way he speaks about a Mosai Kosi Malach Shifutsama and Nasecha Chutza, the way the previous Rebbe even spoke about it. He said, if you ask the Rebbe, the Rebbe said, if you ask the Rebbe Rashab, the Rebbe Rashab said, like you have to learn to see this. Why you have to learn to see this? There's Dasalike Avicha, there's Bir Hamidois, a million things. One of the advantages of learning to see this is that Osimar, the Malkum Mashiach, brings Mashiach. Then there is the Rebbe says, I start off with, I have to bring Moshiach. The way to bring Moshiach, I look, what brings Moshiach is Limud The In other words, where you start, the whole focus is different. For years, we did Shlichis. The goal of our Shlichis, we kind of Yidin and wonderful things, is also to bring Moshiach. Like, that's part of the goal. It wasn't, it didn't have to be imbued in every part of what we're doing. When you ask me in the morning, what am I doing? I'm on shlichis. I'm a, I'm a kind of Yidin. I'm, a, you know, doing nachas to the Rebbe. Wonderful things. All that is dramatically shifts. I'm only doing one thing. I'm bringing Moshiach. Now, for that to happen, there's all the Mifzoy and everything that I'm doing. But the entire mission statement, and it's not just a statement. It starts really in Ashkafo. We are unholding in my life. And what I'm dreaming and looking to accomplish every single moment changes from the Sikh of Chayasar. So how does that spell out to the Yid HaMasayim? He knows that he's putting on fill and how do it, I guess, how do we get, it has to become a big enough um, vibe in the whole Lubavitch, I guess, that the whole movement kind of... So that's our in. job, A, to be living examples of happy, successful people and getting the message out. 
and the education, getting more and more, the more people that learn about these inyonim, the more we will see this happen. And what is, Mashiach is, could come now. We shouldn't say, oh, until that will happen, Mashiach We're not giving David any excuses. We're not giving any exact excuses <laughs> or answers. But on our part, the more we're involved with learning, teaching about Mashiach, the, you know, it's, it's catchy. And the, the more and more we can get it going. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi Avton. Thank you, Thank you everyone, for, the for listening. And for the privilege and for the conversation. And let's keep it real. Amen. We want Mashiach yes, now. now. Ya 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 ya